All right, if you want to open up your books to Psalm 26, we'll take a walk through that today. Verse 1, uh, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord, and I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence. So I will go about your altar, O Lord. (laughs) Thank you. Uh Uh-oh. So I'll go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of your wondrous works, Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty men, in whose hands is a sinister scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity, redeem me, and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place, in the congregations I will bless the Lord." So as we look at verses 1 through 3, um, David uses the word vindicate. Um, he's asking the Lord to justify him and hold him blameless, uh, to prove him innocent. Um, I will walk in my integrity. That seems to be kind of boastful. Um, but it's not a claim to sinless perfection, but moral and spiritual integrity. Uh, a sense of security comes from a life led with integrity. Uh, this assurance is reflected by David's request for God to examine him and to try or test his ways. Um, David's integrity did not come from himself, but comes from the Lord. Verses 4 through 5, a person's faithfulness toward God is apparent not only by the way they have done, by what they have done in their lives, but what is also avoided. Um, In particular, who we are affiliated with in our lives First Corinthians 15.33 tells us that evil company corrupts good habits. The people we have in our lives are like ingredients in a recipe. If we add the wrong ones, the whole batch is corrupted, right? Um, verse 6, uh, washing the hands is an oath of purification, purification, symbolizing innocence. David was separating himself from the evildoers and the wicked he mentioned in verse 5. Um, In verse 8, house symbolizes a sanctuary of the temple, a place where God's glory dwells and represents, and this represents his presence among his people. Uh, In 9 and 10, uh, David here is making a request to not be included in the judgment of the world, but to be separate from them, as he has not walked in their ways, but the ways of the Lord. Uh, We read this in verse 3 with, I walked in your truth. Speaking of the Lord's truth. Um, So I wanted to highlight verses 1 and 12 here. Um, Verses 1 and 12, we see the word walk. We often talk about when we profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that our walk begins. Um, This word is used a lot in Scripture to to refer to our walk as the Lord. Just as David speaks of of his walk in integrity, we can also walk in our integrity. We can do this because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. He washed us and made us clean. He made a way for us to walk blameless in his presence. And David acknowledged that he walks, his in, walks in, with integrity not only because of his ways, but because he has trusted in the Lord. And just like David, as long as uh, we examine our ways, we will walk on the right path. Um, The Lord is our guide on our walk, and he made a way when he gave his life for us on the cross. Uh, Let us examine ourselves before the Lord and ask him to show us anything that we need to remove um, that we place in his way. So before we take communion, uh, let's just take about 30 seconds in silent reflection and, uh, and go to the Lord.
All right, we can partake in communion together. And then I'll share a couple verses that, um, as I was studying through this psalm, kind of stood out to me. So as I was studying through this psalm, a few verses from Proverbs kind of stood out to me, and I wanted to share them because they relate to this psalm very well. And you can mark them in your books, so you don't have to turn there, uh, or you can mark them, write them down in your notes. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, trust in the Lord by your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Uh, in chap- Proverbs chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have, oops, yep, I've taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. And another one that I keep close to my heart is Romans 12, 2, uh, verses 1 through 2. Oh boy, I didn't mark that. There we go. Um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. Father, we come to you today um, and humble ourselves and, uh, and thank you for all that you have done for us, that you took away our sins um, with, your, with the giving of your life. Um, we just ask that you guide us and that we follow you in all our ways. And uh, we know that we live in the world, but we're not of the world, and that we may shine your light in every situation that we ever face. I pray for Pastor Landon today um, and his preaching. And uh, pray for Kids Church, uh, guide the teachers in their words, and open all of our hearts to your words and your teaching today. In Jesus' name, we pray.